Chemiosmosis is the generation of ATP through the flow of protons across a membrane. And those protons are going through an enzyme called ATP synthase. Now, chemiosmosis will occur in prokaryotes because that's where it evolved, and in chloroplasts and in mitochondria because those are prokaryotes engulfed in another membrane in the endosymbiont theory of organelle formation. Now, chemiosmosis relies on a proton gradient, that is a gradient of hydrogen ions, generated by an electron transport chain on a membrane. The energy for the electrons moved in the electron transport chain either comes from the capturing of light in chloroplasts or from oxidation in mitochondria. So we've got an outer membrane, we've got an inner membrane, we've got a gap between the two membranes, and then we have a hydrogen ion gradient where there are lots of hydrogen ions inside and there are few on the other side. Those hydrogen ions then flow through hydrophilic channels, which are in the enzyme, which is the ATP synthase. And as they flow through, the enzyme rotates and it takes adenosine diphosphate and adds a phosphate to turn it into adenosine triphosphate. Now, in a mitochondria, then this is the outer membrane of the mitochondrion. This is the inner membrane. Both of these are phospholipid bilayers. The inner membrane also has infoldings, which would be called cristae. The mitochondria has a mitochondrial matrix, which is the cytoplasm of the mitochondria, and then it's got the gap. In a chloroplast, you have the stroma, which is the, um, the cytoplasm of the chloroplast, and then you have a thylakoid membrane and another thylakoid membrane. Both of these are phospholipid bilayers, so they prevent the flow of protons, and the protons are inside the thylakoid interior and they flow out through ATP synthase. The protons build up inside the mitochondria and again they flow out through, back into the matrix through ATP synthase in both circumstances generating ATP. Now I said the flow of electrons was caused by the electron transport chain. Now in a mitochondrion um, we have the electrons being delivered by a carrier molecule, which is a reduced carrier, so it's NADH. It can also be FADH, which comes in slightly later on in the electron transport chain. Now that delivers its electron, and the electron joins onto an electron carrier, and the proton is released at that point from the NADH. Now the electron moves down a chain of carriers and as it does so it moves hydrogen ions across the membrane and it moves them from the matrix into the intermembrane space. It moves them from where there are few hydrogen ions in the matrix into the intermembrane space where there are lots. So it's moving them against the concentration gradient and this requires energy. At the end of the electron transport chain, the electron joins with oxygen and hydrogen ions and makes water. So the role of the oxygen is to be the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain. Now this process is called oxidative phosphorylation. You've generated the hydrogen gradient and those hydrogens then flow out through ATP synthase back into the mitochondrial matrix. And as it does that, it phosphorylates ADP plus P to give you ATP. Now in a chloroplast, the energy for the movement of the electrons comes from light. And that's achieved by having a photosystem. And the photosystem is a network of different pigments 
that absorbs different wavelengths of light and as it absorbs the different wavelengths of light an electron is lost the electron travels down a chain of carriers and as it moves down the chain of carriers it picks up hydrogen ions and the hydrogen ions are moved from the stroma into the thylakoid interior. Now the electron that gets to the final um, photosystem, which is photosystem 1, and it goes from photosystem 2, that electron is going to join to a carrier molecule called NADP, and that's going to be reduced to NADPH, which then gets used in the Calvin cycle more of um, in a later video. Now, people um, who are being observant will have noticed that the electron is missing from photosystem 2, and that's replaced by the photolysis the splitting with light of water to give you an electron, oxygen and hydrogen ions. These hydrogen ions add to the hydrogen gradient which has been generated by the movement of the protons across the membrane by the electron transport chain which is powered by light. Those protons then flow out through ATP synthase, again phosphorylating an ADP to an ATP. So, just to recap, chemiosmosis is flow of protons across a membrane and it goes through ATP synthase, um, occurs in chloroplast, mitochondria and prokaryotes. The proton gradient is generated by an electron transport chain and the difference between um, photophosphorylation and oxidative phosphorylation is where the electrons come from and where the uh, energy to move those electrons come from. In photophosphorylation the electrons come from water and the uh, energy comes from light being captured by photosystem 2 and photosystem 1 whereas in oxidative phosphorylation the energy comes from the oxidation of a respiratory substrate. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching to the end. Please subscribe.